just, you just witnessed uh, a God moment. Um, we, we heard Yair and Sean in Israel on the trip that you were speaking of where God had spoken to you to connect with him. And I had invited you on a whim. And then we get over and you're like, do you mind if we have an Orthodox guy come in? And then you had to get permission from your rabbi. And that was approved, which is, you know, that's huge. Huge antic, hanging out with weirdo evangelicals swinging from the chandelier charismatics. <laughs> And, and, then, uh, and then all this comes together and for a time of peace where the world is in turmoil and I, I just, God used you to do an amazing thing and we got to witness it tonight and so grateful for you. And I know it came at a cost and I, I want you to share that tonight. So let's sit down and we're gonna start with that. So grab a seat, you guys right here and where am I going? Okay, all right. I want you closest to me, Green. Um, I just learned the story. You're here with your husband, Jason, and um, you, you agreed to do this. And, uh, you know, you're uh, an Arab Lebanese. This is an Orthodox Jew, Israelite, and some the, weirdos here. They don't here. usually, like, this doesn't usually happen. This doesn't happen. Yeah, and, <laughs> and then to sing together... Um, what happened as a result of that? What does this cost you personally? Um, so we did a song, uh, him and I, like uh, 2020, right? Uh, 2020, 2021, January 2021. And uh, it was a journey um, starting from 2016. The Lord uh, spoke to me through a message from Rabbi Jason Sobel, actually, that opened my, I'm, I'm so happy he's here in this day. Um, because God used him in my life to open up my eyes to see the truth about Israel and that's how my journey started and um, to, to start searching for the truth how yeah, yeah you're allowed to clap I mean you're not going to ruin anything <laughs> I start searching and looking and reading and um, listening to Messiah, like a Jewish people worshiping and, and to see, I start seeing Israel from God's eyes and through his heart and, and I'm like, oh my goodness, like, and I start going back to all the lies and deceptions that we were in in Lebanon to hate on Israel. I was angry at Israel because I was this girl who was born and raised in the bomb shelter and I had so much trauma in my life. Thank God Jesus like helped me in America to be healed because there was no doctors helping us over there anymore. Thank God, you know, thank Je the Lord helped with that. And um, so it's just, um, so yeah, it's just, you know, we, we did this song and, um, and the Lord just took it in places I never ever, I just was in fear. Like I didn't want to do it because I knew how much there is hate on the other side. Like I knew how much my country have hate for them, but I never seen hate from their side. So when I came to America, I was looking to both sides and I start seeing different. Being here helped me to see both sides of the news and not only one side, but most important, I saw God's news and I saw how he see Israel that got me to be like, who do I stand with? Like, do I stand with God or do I stand with my country? And the Lord did the whole thing for me to be able to break from like the attachment of my country and to just connect to my heavenly home, you know, to heaven and to be able to do what we're doing. And um, now I'm banned from the government of Lebanon to go back. Um, the, they officially did it in last, uh, it was a Christmas gift, you know, like on December. <laughs> I'm like, Anyway, probably we should not supposed to do this right now, like Christmas, we have to go back to our origin, but I'm, tr I'm still trying to figure it out. Uh, just, you um, can spend Christmas with us. Yeah, you know. <laughs> but um, so yeah, thank God, like my family's here because I just, I was in a place like, I'm like, Lord, I have still family there, like cousins and aunts and uncles, and you know, what do I do? And he's like, you just trust me. So I had to do something to be wise. We have to, you know, to be, you know, wisdom is that I have to tell them, like, I cannot connect to you. I have to be disconnected. And because if anyone came to you and told you about me, tell them, I, we don't know her. She's crazy, a Jesus freak, whatever. We have nothing to do with her. But some of my family were like, no, you haven't done anything. Our government is corrupted. And they are like, we don't care. You're doing the right thing for Lebanon. So, um... This has been the journey. That's, that's yeah. So, 
I'm a for the, for, former IDF captain in a, a unit that similar to the Navy SEAL so in Israel. So I just released a song for my grandma for healing, the song Refana that we just sang for, for the injured in Israel. And I got suddenly a message from someone that telling me that she is a Lebanese. So you can imagine that, that I, as a former IDF captain, I said uh, Lebanon is a place of war. It's not, I'm not going to answer this message and I didn't know what to do for a couple of days. And then I just opened the video that she sent me and she was singing Refana, the song Refana in Arabic. And first it was very beautiful. But um, I just understood that I don't understand anything. <laughs> and it's, it's true about the, the people in the Middle East, and it's true about what you said, that I need to get permission from a rabbi to come in and sing with Sean. Because I think that when you meet people, you understand that all the things that you, was, all the things that you used to think about them maybe 99% of them, of this is wrong. And when I started to speak with, with Karin, I understood that she's an amazing person, amazing singer, and we, I want to do it. I want, I want to, she, she asked me if I can sing in Arabic. I said, if you can help me, I will try. And we would just release the song in Arabic to the Middle East, me and her together. And Today was the first day they met in person. And this is actually, you won't believe it, we, we, we made a lot of interviews in the Middle East, in Israel, in a lot of places, but this is the first time that we met today. This is, uh, yeah. So I was, I have the best job. Because seriously, it's a Forrest Gump anointing. I, I get to be a historical moments and I have no talent um, but I was in the green room with them and it was fascinating to me that you were talking about the minute you posted it we saw all the hate come in and we were getting pushback from our Christian brothers who are replacement theology you know even the Finocchio brothers who we're dealing and their friends are brothers in Christ and we're dealing with folks who are saying how can you support Israel there's almost an anger towards it in the Christian community and and the younger Christians have been indoctrinated with this theology. But what was fascinating to me is here we have a, a, an Arab Christian and you're getting pushed back as well, just like Sean and I are. To, to, I mean, you're causing all kinds of problems here, Yair. <laughs> and you know what? All three of us are thrilled by it because you are our, our friend, our brother, and we're here to, to, to be a blessing to Israel. So, amen. Talk about that a little, Sean. Yeah, I, I, I want to say I want to say this because I've worshipped with in, in Palestinian uh, churches and and I've actually worshipped in Israel with Arab worship leaders and Jewish worship leaders and and I've brought in Jew, Israeli Jews with me into Iraq to worship in Iraq. I mean, we've done the craziest stuff. Uh, we've broken all the rules and I've been detained. Shocking. I, I've been. I've been detained in Ben Gurion Airport. I was telling Yair I was detained there um, shortly after I uh, was in Afghanistan after 9/11, and they were asking me why I was there, and I was like, "What do I look like? Like, I'm not your target terrorist-looking person." Um, but anyway, my point is this: there is massive division that comes against worship. There's something powerful. Like powers and systems and governments and principalities don't want this to happen, right? There's something that happens when we get together. And this is why I love music and I love worship because songs go to places where tweets can't go. Songs go to places where political speeches can't go. Songs bypass the mind. They bypass the, 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 the brainwashing. They bypass the biases and they go to the heart. And so... 
He watches her song and it goes to his heart. She watches his song and, and, and it goes to his heart. We begin to sing the song of the Lord over Israel and it goes to the heart of the next generation. Yeah. You know? And, 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 so, and so there's a lot of warfare around this because the enemy doesn't want us getting together singing God's heart. Because we'll enter into a spirit of It's like Acts chapter 2. Like when they were all together in one accord, they were singing, they were worshiping, fire came. And that's what happens. That's why we got to do this. Amen. I, I, so you, you shared the reason why this is so profound and powerful. And you also know that. And especially with the pushback you've gotten from your community. But I'm also thinking too, yeah, you're, you, you had pushback from your community. There's, there's Orthodox Jews who aren't thrilled you're hanging around with evangelical Christians. Yes or no? Um, no, actually not. I nobody. No, 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 not nobody. Okay. But um, when I went to ask for permission, I, I, will, I, will, I will explain the, the process, okay? The, my song, Yofana, Christian people started to sing it. And I just uh, was sitting in my my studio, and people used to invite me to sing in, in Zoom because it was during the pandemic. And every time I was singing, I was, I was looking at the screen and see a lot of people doing like this. <laughs> and I said like, who are they? <laughs> That's <hilarious. laughs> and and, and I'm, 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 I'm serious now. Because it's, it's, it's funny, but it's a real problem. Because the Israeli people don't know that we have here such a good friends that praying for us, that mm -hmm. fasting for us, they're doing a lot of things to support Israel. And this is much bigger than all the things that we disagree. And this is why I started to understand. Although you are doing so much for, for Israel, the people of Israel don't understand it and I in this moment when I felt like actually I didn't want to do it at the beginning I remember one day that I walked back from the studio after a concert so I went uh, it's what in, in, the, in, in the morning because in Israel you know it's the difference of uh, the time differences so I went went to my wife and I told her like I don't want to do it I don't know who they are I, I don't and even don't speak English so good as you, as you can feel and uh, I don't know what they want from me and what God, and, and, and what is the plan? And she said, it's not about what you want. It's about what God wants. Yeah. yeah. So I will just finish with this. So I got a lot of messages from people to come and, and, and sing in, 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 in the U.S. and in the different countries. But I, as an Orthodox Jew, I can't go into churches. So one of the people that's helping me to manage everything told me, why won't you go to a rabbi to ask him? So I said, you know what? I will go and the, 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 my, what I wanted to do is to go to someone that I know for sure that will say no. <laughs> this is the truth. Wisdom. This is the truth. <laughs> and he didn't call me back. So I waited a week. Another week, I called him back. He said, I, I need to, I will call you tomorrow, tomorrow, tomorrow. And then, after a month, I, I got a phone call from him telling me that he went to one of the most biggest rabbi all over the world. That, and he showed him what I'm doing. And he said, it's allowed. So it's not a small rabbi. It's not um, my rabbi permission. It's one of the most biggest rabbis all over the world that gave me that, gave me this permission. Come on. And I think that we are much closer to the moment when I told you today in, in the studio that the Christian people need to stop supporting Israel and starting to be involved in Israel and part of Israel because we have a common enemy and we see it in, in everywhere and right now of course it's not only the problem of Israel and we need to come together against this enemy that's it Amen
Anything on your heart? Anything you want to share? You just look like you're smiling, you're Cheshire Cat, you're ready to tell us something. <laughs> Why don't, this is what I think would be good for you to share. I mean, I've, I've, a lot of people I think are unaware of God's awakening that's happening in the Middle East. That's and cool. not only in Israel, but, you know, the fastest, the fastest um, underground church in the world right now is actually in Iran. Yeah. And one of the first things that we see God doing among believers in Iran or in Turkey or in Iraq or in uh, Saudi or in these nations is one of the first things that happens, one of the first miracles is he begins to turn their heart towards the Jewish people. They begin to love them. They begin to pray for them. I mean, you know, you go to the underground church in China. Every underground church in China has an Israeli flag. Yep. I mean, this is facts, right? I mean, God be, is beginning to impart this heart in, in so many different nations of the world. So I, I want you to just touch on that, being Lebanese, being Arab. What has been your experience in this season? Because a lot of people, you know, uh, they, they look at what's happening in the Middle East and maybe even from the Israeli perspective, they're like, all these enemies and all these people hate Israel. And it's like not totally true. There are governments that do. There are terrorists that do. But yet there are people in those countries that actually pray for Israel. So maybe you can talk about that. Yeah, you know, I, since I started doing, you know, like with the year, the song, getting involved in this whole calling, um, the Lord started showing me even people like in the Middle East, like how they have been meeting and um, like in places like different, like Dubai and Jordan and all these places. Just because their heart, they, God's awakening their heart, like in Lebanon, in Syria, and Egypt. Egypt, they're like waiting, let's build, you know, Isaiah, you know, like, yeah, let's Isaiah go, build, let's build that. Isaiah <laughs> like 35, Highway of Holiness. Like, and, and, you know, there's so many people are so excited for this, like, you know, they blow the shofar in Egypt, and, <laughs> and I'm just like, oh my goodness. And there is even churches like, like in Lebanon, they blow shofar, by the way. I don't know if I told you this. But I was just like, I'm like, this is crazy. If they see you, they're like, this is biblical. We're following the Bible. Like, if they're going to, this is not in Israel. This is the Bible. And I'm just like, you do you. I'll pray for you. You know, but there's just some, there is a, there is a, a boldness coming up, you know, with the, some of the Christian churches, even in Lebanon. And I've been following up with many of them. God is awakening their heart. Come like on. they have heart. Yeah. They are praying right now, even for Israel. Like they go and they go to places and they go to the mountain, in the border between Israel and Lebanon. And they go break the curses that's been released from the area from yeah. Christian believers. They want to bless Israel. So, yeah, it's, it's crazy just... To see how God's turning our heart to literally back to the origin of our faith, you know, like this is the foundation of our faith. Like this is what, you know, I mean, Jesus is a Jewish. He's not like uh, 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 from Iraq or, you know, he's, he's from this land. He came to my country. Like he walked in, in this region there. So it's just like, so, but the problem is what I've been seeing is that the devil has been hindering this, this truth from all of us. And I, we've been deceived all these years as Christians. And um, I'm not going to blame anyone, but it's just the devil. It's just like they have been listening to the wrong voice to be able to take us away from our roots as believers. And I feel like the Lord's now, as he's shaking the ground, and I feel like he's going to shake the just even the bride to be able to break even on their placement theology and to go back to Roman 11 and to see really what God says over there regarding his promise. And even in Jeremiah 29, when he said, you know, it's an everlasting, everlasting um, covenant, you know, it's, it's not something is going to end. It's have a, it doesn't have an, an ending. And I'm just like sitting there reading, like, how can we not believe that it's, it's because they believe in Lebanon is just like it was just in the Old Testament that was Israel the church you know there's many of them I'm getting a lot of those hate hate messages and I'm just like I don't want to even I want to tell you but I don't see you you're there yet but I believe God is whatever happened now in Israel I think now the church is going to be shaken and the replacement to is, is going to be destroyed it's time yeah amen Time is now. 
for, for, for those of you who don't know what replacement theology is and what the church is um, divided over, um, Ty did a really good message. I did one on it. You can check that out. It's just to understand what replacement theology is and how it's divisive between Jews and Christians. Um, and, and we're seeing as the church is embracing the Palestinians and justifying that what they did to the Israeli children and the concert goers was legit. And it's just, it's tragic. Um, but as you so eloquently pointed out, Green, that there's a move of the heart that you go back to the, to the God of the Bible and you realize this is the nation he blessed. And they, we want to replace it and say it's the church. It just, you got to do a pretzel theologically to, to do that. And that's why I'm so shocked by the Finocchio brothers, because they're usually spot on. And, and yet they did that meme. Talk about that. You remember the, the meme that he did? I was stunned by that. These guys are usually spot on theologically, and they couldn't be more wrong in relation to what's happening here tonight. Yeah. Talk on that, would you? Yeah, I, I, I feel like, you know, um, I was alarmed, obviously, in COVID at the, at the, the majority of the church and and their unwillingness to push back. And it's like, of course, we don't, we don't ever obey government over God. We haven't done that in 2,000 years of church history. Um, and then I was also em- embarrassed and kind of alarmed at the overturning of Roe v. Wade. And I remember thinking when I was, uh, when I was a believer, uh, when I was uh, in, in high school praying for the, for the ending of the, of the death decree of abortion, that if that ever happened in my lifetime, the church would be dancing in the street. Yeah. Well, I led the first worship service in post row era on the Supreme Court. I led the first one in post row America, the first worship leader to lead worship in post row America, and there was about 100 people there. And if you would have told me it would have happened in my lifetime, I'd have been like, there's going to be 100,000 people. We've been praying for 50 years for this. But that was exposed. And then if you would have told me about this, that 1,300 Jews were murdered and massacred and babies ripped apart out of their mother's stomachs and that 200 hostages would be taken, including 30 Americans, by the way, if you would have told me that, I would have been like, oh, for sure their church is going to rise up. At the very least, they're going to pray. I mean, we get pushed back for wanting to pray for Israel. It's like if it were any other nation that had terrorists kill 1,300 people, like that wouldn't be a problem. But Israel's political. Let me just tell you, it's not. And so right now we're in a season of mass exposing of a lot of these issues right now. And I think ultimately it's a good thing because we need to know where we stand. Right? Just like he said, those who bless Israel will be blessed. Like that, that's, you know, and, and there's a covenant that God makes. And why do I know that God's faithful with the promises over my life? Because these people still exist. And, and, and there's an, there's an arrogance in the West that so many people have because they're so far removed from their history. And that's part of what has to come off of us. We, we don't get the privilege of, if we're going to say that we get all the promises of Israel, then we're, then then that's saying we're going to get all the pain that they've gone through. The Holocaust, the most persecuted people group in the history of the world. I mean, I mean, it's just, it's not even up for debate. And so it's just, you have to approach this topic with humility and you have to say, God, you're writing this story. I don't know why you're not returning back to Mount Everest. It's the tallest place on planet earth. It would be an epic place to return to, but you're returning back to the Mount of Olives. You're returning back to the Middle East. You're returning back to Israel. And so I think it's just very important for us. And again, a lot of people like to give me flack and I'm like, hey, raise your hand when you've been in war zones across the Middle East and you've worshiped with Muslims and you've done outreach to Muslim refugees. I've done it all across the nations. So I love, I love to see God move in Palestinian refugee camps. I love to see a move in Jordanese refugee camps. I love to see a move on the front lines of ISIS. You know what my prayer is? Yeah, take Hamas out. But Lord, in the meantime, save a couple of them too. You know, you did it with ISIS. You did it with, and I love it. Like how hilarious is it that the lead, the sons, the son of the main Hamas leader. Come on. Is now an evangelist for Jesus. I mean, the son, 
of Hamas. Like, guys, God can do anything. Do you believe me? So a night of hope for Israel, the purpose of tonight is to give you, and, and, and we, I want Yair and, and maybe Rob and, and just to give us some prayer points as we go into this season, because I'm, I'm telling you, I feel this in my spirit. This is not going to end quickly. This, they're, they're, they're going to have to go and root out these guys. It's going to take a long time. I mean, he's the, he probably has all the IDF knowledge. He won't tell us, but um, it's going to take a long time. And we're going to be in the middle of this for a long time. And, and God is raising up intercessors that are going to pray. That's what you guys are. Amen. Can you bring your Bible? If you have a Bible, this is anointed. Okay, there you go. No, that, that, I want you to read. Help me oh, with the English. Oh, okay. Yeah? All right. So, if you have a Bible, so open Ezekiel seven, verse number twenty-three. Seven twenty-two. Ezekiel seven, verse twenty-three. So, the reason why I'm, I'm asking you to open it is because that. I wanted to make a video on Instagram to explain what is Hamas. And actually Hamas in Hebrew, when you see in the Bible the translation of the word Hamas, it most of the time is violence, um, 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 and bad things, okay? <laughs> Sorry about my English, bad things, and most of the time violence. I got it. But when I opened the, the Bible the to, to make 22. a video about it, I suddenly realized that Ezekiel 7, verse number 23, talk about... 22 or 23? 23. Talk about Hamas. And the attack of Hamas to Israel was on day Shabbat, day number 7. In the 10, 23 right of Mount Tishrei, so this is the first month of the year in the Jewish oh, yeah. calendar, 23 days, so Kaf Gimel in Hebrew we'll say. And let's read it. Right there. Wait. Can you read it for me? Make a chain for the land is filled with crimes of blood and the city is full of violence. Make a chain is to take, to take hostage. Yeah. In Hebrew, it's, it, the, the transit for me was take it hostage for the land of full with crimes. Of Crimes blood, of blood yeah. and the city is full of violence, and in Hebrew, it's full of Hamas. And then I realized that in our Bible, we have a lot of signs. We need to trust Him. We need to understand that it's all prepared for us. We just need to choose. If we will follow, this will be just another verse that we, we don't put any attention on, 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 on the meaning. But if not... And unfortunately, we are, need to work on it. Um, we will have a lot of violence and a lot of Hamas. And the reason why I'm saying it is because it, I feel, all those who have uh, kids here, that when your kids is like playing with each other with smile, and even if they don't do exactly what you ask them to do, you will be happy. Am I right? Yeah. But if they're going to fight each other, you're going to be sad as a father, as a mother. Yeah? So I think that even we, if sometimes we don't know exactly what are, we are doing, like the song that we just sang for the first time, or things like this, we're just trying. I think that God watching us and happy to see that both of his sons, Christian, Jews, a man of Muslim too, I wish, working together. And this is what we did here. And I want to say thank you. Mm. And this is my, my prayer. If you say about prayer, so this is my prayer. That this is his wills. That we will come together and fight against the devil. But as you said, we will worship together. Amen. Because this is the strongest thing that we can do. And thank you so much for doing this. I'm sending you again. Yeah. Big hug for me. Why don't you come up here, Rabbi? And Eve. Oh, oh, Jason? Or? Yeah, yeah, Jason, okay, yeah. Jason. I, I, um, I'd love for you to, to close us in prayer tonight and give us a, a charge as believers. Um, and, you know, I think my heart tonight, obviously, 
hearing these songs and these prayers and worshiping together, but that, that this wouldn't be a moment where we just check the box and it's like, oh, Israel, yeah, yeah, we're, we're, we're on the right side there. No, but that we would actually get God's heart and be intercessors that would partner with him. You know, um, <laughs> it's, it's going to get crazier. And I'm not a gloom and doom guy. I'm like the joyful warrior, right? That's just how I live. I'm an optimist, but I'm just telling you, <laughs> We haven't seen anything yet. And, and in the midst of it all, there's a shining, spotless bride that's not hiding somewhere in a bunker. Right? But that's full of joy and full of hope. I love Psalm chapter 2. You know, it says, as the armies mount up against the Lord, he who sits in the heavens laughs. And, you know... We've had, we had upheaval in America. We're heading into an election year. <laughs> it, it ain't even started to get crazy yet. Yeah, I mean, buckle up, buttercup. If you're an American, buckle up. I mean, there's new variants coming. We already know. There's new stuff right around the bend. But, like, we got to be a people of joy, a people of hope. We got to be a people of worship. Amen. You know, I think that... Uh... A, f- a true friend is someone who runs in when everyone is running out. That's good. And there's a lot of people running from Israel because it's not popular, because they're concerned about what the people around them will say. But we need to be those who have the courage to run towards our friends. You know, nation, Israel was very divided before the war broke out. And now there's achdut, there's unity. And hopefully this issue and what we see going on in the world is that united Israel will unite the body of Messiah with the Jewish people to stand together. Because I truly believe that we are in a John 21 moment. The disciples were fishing all night and they caught nothing. Yeshua said, throw the net again. And there was a great catch of fish that came in. And I believe God wants to bring a great catch in the midst of everything that's going on. But there's no John 21 great catch without John 17 unity. And Yeshua prayed that these and those would be one, like he and the Father were one. And I believe that is talking about Jews and Gentiles uniting in this season. Listen, there were four women in the genealogy of Yeshua. Women were not included in Jewish genealogies. What they all had in common is that they were all Gentiles. Because it takes Jew and Gentile to birth the line of David, and it's going to take Jew and Gentile to birth the kingdom of God on earth as it is in heaven. God is birthing something in this season, but we can only birth it together. Now is the time to stand with Israel. But here's the thing. I'll just say this and I'll pray. But I think this is so important to remember. We're talking about the heart and spirit. Yeshua said... Bless those who curse you and pray for those who persecute you. And for those of us that love Israel and stand with Israel, as Sean has said, we also need to pray for the Palestinians, for the Arab peoples, especially for God to protect the innocent lives. Because God has a promise for the children of Ishmael and they are extended family. And we need to pray for them. And we need to care for them and love them. And we can't get up responding in hate to the other side. The Torah says, do not hate your brother in your heart. So if as Messianic Jews, as Jews, as followers of Yeshua, as Christians, we need to pray for the Arab peoples, pray for the children of Israel, for God to move, to change hearts, to do something powerful. And the charges to the Arab brothers and sisters And to those on the other side of the aisle that don't want to stand with Israel, if we take Yeshua's, if we take the word seriously, pray for the peace of Jerusalem, as yet you're so beautifully saying and spoke of tonight, 
if we take God's word seriously, we have to pray for Israel. We have to bless Israel. And we have to ask God to protect Israel because if we don't, Yeshua says, we're no better than the pagans. To combat a spirit, you need to come in the opposite spirit. There's a spirit of hate in Hamas. See, not chinom, senseless hatred. We need to come in the opposite spirit of love, but strength. Amen? Amen. So, Abba Father, we just come before you in the name of our God in heaven. And we just want to ask that we would be united, that we would know how to stand. We do say, Ana Adonai Hoshiana, Ana Adonai Hoshiana, Lord, grant salvation now. Ana Adonai Hatzlechana, Lord, grant deliverance now. Protect every Israeli, protect every soldier, protect every innocent light in life in Eretz Yisrael, protect every innocent Palestinian. Watch over and protect them, guide them, and guard them. And we just lift them up to you. We pray, God, that you would turn hearts to you in this season. We pray that there would be an awakening among God's people, that those who call on the name of Yeshua, who is Ben David, the son of David, when God came, he came in human flesh, tie himself to the history and destiny of Israel, that there would be eyes open in the church to understand that the fate of the church is tied to the fate of Israel, and we would be united, and we would be one, and that we would see God, you move among Israel and move among the Palestinian people, Lord. We pray, God, for strength to those that are fighting evil and standing for truth. And we pray, God, for the great catch to come in. And I just pray over you all right now. <laughs> Yisa Adonai Panevelecha Vayasem Lecha Shalom The Lord bless you and keep you Israel and everyone here. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance to you and give you shalom, nothing missing, nothing broken. In the name of Sar Shalom, the Prince of Peace. Amen. <laughs>